Welcome to the house, it's the one they talking about Word of mouth, the boxing playhouse Without a doubt, all the latest and greatest boxing news That's what it's all about To Boxing Playhouse, and this is your girl Sakura A and Emilio Santana. What's up, what's up, y'all? And this is After Dark series, and you know what time it is? That's right, it's Ladies' Night. We got the first Thursday of each month dedicated to the women of boxing, and we can't wait to see who this, who we have this week that you know we're so honored and blessed to have with us. So these ladies in boxes are not playing around. They all about the business. So I can't wait to find out more about them. But in the meantime, what's going on? I mean, what's in the boxing world? Man, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, what's going on? I just seen some news uh, a few minutes ago where the negotiations with with Tio and Lomo look like they ain't they ain't going to work. I don't know. They saying Timo... Wants a little bit more money. Uh, Bob Aaron said he's giving him double what he's, you know, his career high. Mm -hmm. So, and and Lomo said he's willing to work. You know, he knows about the pandemic situation, so he's willing to work it through. But Tio wants, you know, he ain't feel like he's trying to take no kind of cut. He feel like he's worth more than what they're trying to offer him. So that was the latest thing that I've, I've seen right there. Mm. How you feel about that? I mean, I'm just wondering, like, is he just trying to get, like, a little extra coins out of the situation as much as possible? Um, because it may be a career high pan day for him. Or if he really feels like, yeah, I'm valued at more money. I expect to get more money. And I'm holding firm in that belief. So, I mean, I really don't know which one it is. All I can say is that, you know, in his particular situation, I feel that the long-term success that he may garner from this fight is worth taking that pay cut right now. I mean, because you would be able to gain Lomo fans, you would be seen globally by his fans, and you setting yourself up for more incredible fights. So, um, you know, which you could probably garner more money from if you do end up being or beating the lightweight sensation known as Lomachenko. Yeah. So I feel like it's worth that risk for him to take. And you know, when we're talking about 1.3 million, we're talking about 1.4 million, I'm not sure which, but that's a lot of coins. I mean, he's talking about getting more money than Keith Thurman got for fighting, I mean, the Pacquiao. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I feel like you might be reaching a little bit because, you know, is Lomachenko on the level of a Pacquiao? I mean, I'm going to have to say no. You know, we're not talking about a multi-division champion in that respect, the way that Pacquiao's is. I think um, Loma would be um, like a two. I think he's gone up two weight classes. So he's had two championships at different weight classes. Um I mean, well, two divisions of championships. But you talking about Pacquiao moving all the way down from what? Flyweight? Yeah. I mean, all the way, all way up. All the way up. Yeah, all the way up to welterweight. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I just don't think that he's on that level. So, and then we're talking about COVID too. You add in that to the equation. I'm I'm gonna have to just say I don't I don't know about that. Like, I hate to see him. I'll price itself and you know miss that fight for so many people been anticipating that fight want to see see that fight like myself mm -hmm. you know we all craving for a nice a good fight a competitive fight you know on that level so you know with all the pan with the pandemic going and, and the cancellations of a lot of events you know that's just a you know a black eye to me if that fight don't come off yeah so I'm hoping I'm hoping that they can work it out and Bob Aaron them don't move on to something else. Just hopefully they can work it out. Absolutely. I mean, I'm sure there's a way that they can work it out. My only thing is, and I don't, you know, I don't, I don't pretend to understand what's going on, but to say, you know, something, something is just not, 
something just off about this whole situation. Like, is somebody avoiding really fighting or what? Uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know for sure either, but it just seemed like you know that would be the case. Maybe so. I'm not. I'm not really sure. But I mean, it just it's it's just a look a little bit off to me. Right. Wait. I mean, so what else is going on? Do we have any other big breaking news for this week? Uh, you know, we still still been getting videos with Mike Tyson and Roy Jones. They still trying to hype up their fight. So. You know, that's another thing that's coming up in another month month or so. So, uh -huh. you know, we had, uh, you know, Showtime was back on the air last week. Okay. You know, fighting in the bubble. Yes, yes. That is an excellent topic. Um, shout out to Leo for winning his first world championship. And I just like the way that Showtime, you know, conducted themselves and um, were able to create this bubble and not just create a bubble. I like the way that they had the backup in place by placing those fighters in the same weight divisions together on, on, on as the co-main and the main and everything. You know, I felt like they did an awesome thing. Right. So, I mean, what, what do you think? I thought they did a good job too. Um, you know, under the circumstances, you know, it was a start. You know, I enjoyed the fight. Uh, I can't think of the, the guys that, that fall in, I think, the co-main event, but we saw a spectacular, maybe a candidate for the knockout of the year, you know, the, the fight where the guy got hit with an uppercut. That was a nice uh, a nice shot right there we saw. Mm, that was a pretty nice yeah. shot, punch. I, I like it. Name, but that was, man, that was a picture-perfect uppercut. Uh, it was, a, it was a, a rematch between the two. Right. I mean, I was really glad that that happened. Uh, for me, it was like, you know, a situation where we saw some of the up and coming talent and we also saw what was available in that entire weight class. Right. You know, like some options. I mean, obviously, Neverette has left the division, moved up, left that belt vacant. Um, and that allowed for these up and coming people like Leo to have a chance at that, you know, championship title. So I can't say nothing, but wow. I mean, I loved it. I loved it. Right. Leo, he, he, he fights under the, uh, the Mayweather banner, right? Oh, really? Yeah. He's, he's been working with Floyd and, um, mm. I've seen videos of Floyd getting him ready. Like for the last couple of weeks, it was at the Mayweather gym. Uh -huh. Getting him prepared for this fight right here. Yeah, for sure. Let's see what Scott we got going on with our guests right now. Let's see if we got any. What well, do you see the comments? All right. So let's see. I see Sherry. What's up, Sherry? She says, "Hey." And then somebody says, "What's up?" Oh, where's Alita? Oh, she's not here all the time. We we just mm -hmm. had her as a guest one week, but um, she's doing great. I think. And then, um, let's see, seems like a lot. Do you fight, babe? No, I don't fight. Mm. I just love watching boxing. I'm a huge boxing fan. I write boxing articles. I also interview guests, interview boxers, and we cover boxing news. So that's what we do. And I got Rob here. Rob says, hey, fam, I caught up. On the Lisa McClellan episode from last week. Oh, awesome. Hey, her, story, her story is remarkable, but also tragic and heartbreaking at the same time because of the heart, the hardships that she, her brother, and family have endured following the Nigel Ben fight. Hashtag Boxing Playhouse. Thank you for that hashtag, by the way, Rob. And yes, it was like a very heavy show. It's something that needed to be said, and I'm glad we were able to give her that space and just be on the lookout for her new book. And also, the Ring 10 um, interview with their president and founder, um, Matt, was also really enlightening. And I want to give a shout out to everybody that actually went over to Ring 10's page and logged and, sh and followed them because it's very important that we support that organization that's in um, supporting financially retired boxers and right. injured boxers and you know these guys are in there for our entertainment so when something goes wrong it would be nice to know that the boxing fans and the boxing community 
are going to rally around and make sure that they receive the support that they so richly deserve from us. So please make sure you continue to support Ring 10. All right. So I see one of our guests up here, Daisy Lang. What's up, Daisy? So we're going to see Daisy Lang a little later today. So I'm looking forward to that. And then let's see. Um, that's what we're saying. When you make a comment, make sure you put hashtag BPH for us. It's very important we get these hashtags in. All you techies understand it. <laughs> and then Leonardo, he's watching, as well as Raphael. And let's see, I see a Matilio, or is that Manilio? Manicio? I'm sorry, I'm butchering the name, but I'm sorry. And then we got Husin Khan, he's also following us. All right, so I want to talk about what we haven't talked about this week because it was it's, it's happened a few weeks back. But remember, we had on a the zone card, which was a golden boy card, and we had a, a female champion. She had to fight someone of lesser status as far as competition um, for her belt. Now the problem came about really because you know she was a last minute replacement, and everybody. You know what fucking made me mad? I'm going to go ahead and say it. I mean, I couldn't hold back my curse word right here. But, guys, you don't want to cover female boxing, correct? Right. But as soon as some stuff happens that's negative, you're ready to cover it then. Like, get your life. Get your life. Okay? Because if you want to cover some negativity with female boxing, how about this? How about you cover the good stuff too, which you've been ignoring for freaking years now? Cause so that's what pissed me off about that situation more than anything. And the situation where, you know, really the lady should not have been in the ring with such a talent. Yes, I realize that. We all realize that. But for you to make that a major story, and then you sit up there and skip like three or four weeks of female champions winning titles and stuff, you know, it's just disgusting to me. I mean, I'm, I'm just, just disgusted. Mm -hmm. Now, I do want to send a shout out to other media outlets. Lately, I've been seeing more coverage of ladies. And I hope and pray that we are part of the reason that you're doing it. Because <laughs> the whole purpose is that I'm, we're trying to shine a light on female boxing. And we want all the media to know, like, hey, you got fans out here that want to know more about female boxers, too. So, you know, there's more than enough females to go around for us to all be, you know, um, shouting out and, and really, you know, going ahead and, 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 and encouraging to do better. Um, boxing fans need to know these girls in order to really appreciate when they have a great matchup with each other. Right. So I'm going to move on from that because I really was upset, though. <laughs> it's like you want to cover the negative. Right. <laughs> Freaking Debbie Downers, I swear. Now, let's see, Ken, he says, happy. Oh, he says, hey, Boxing Playhouse. What's up, Ken? All right, and let's see what else we got going on here. Shout out to all the fans we got on here tonight. Gary, we see you here. Rob says, the core went back to the curl. See, laugh out loud. <laughs> boxing Playhouse. Hey, you never know what you're going to get with me. Life is like a box of chocolates, and so is my hair, dudes. Mm. Mm. <laughs> It's whatever you like. Hmm. Where is that, baby? Yeah. You know, sometimes you feel like you want to see me with curls. And oh, sometimes you, yeah, like, you know, Switch ladies, this is a hint for you. Keep your man guessing. <laughs> keep, keep, him, keep him entertained. Because if you don't, somebody else will. <laughs> <laughs> but Rob, thank you so much, sweetheart. I'm glad you noticed. Okay, so let's see what else we got going on here. Oh, I got my Uncle Ed here. Shout out to my aunt. Yeah. Uncle Ed. He's in the house, baby. What's up, Uncle Ed? All the way from Dallas, Texas. Dallas. The Earl. Cowboys. Earl Spence, the truth. Well, you know what? It's a good thing you mentioned Earl Spence because of the fact. What was I going to say? Earl Spence has just, well, PBC and Fox PBC. It's just announced that, you know, Errol Spence is going to have a fight with, can you believe it? Garcia. And Swift. Yes. Do you see this as a good matchup? 
are you disappointed or i mean do you see this as something that's going to be entertaining i think it's going to be entertaining mm. i, I kind of think uh spencer that took a tune-up um you know coming after that a year layoff and the car accident you know the car accident so i, I thought spencer would have been you know mm -hmm. uh-oh uh we're about to lose a light in here okay <laughs> go ahead so you thought um, Spence was what? No, I thought I thought he probably would have, you know, sort of took a tune up, you know. Oh, okay. Maybe a tune up because you know Danny fought in January when he stopped Red Cap, but I would have liked to see him Spence, you know, after that accident and being off a year. I think he probably, you know, sort of took a, a tune up, and then maybe, you know, had a big fight with Danny probably in January, like you know they was gonna do last January. Mm. I think yeah. really should have. You know, I, I want to see him fight, but I really feel like Spence should have maybe took a tune up first. You're absolutely right. I mean, I mean that to me shows me that his mentality right now is that you know I can still do this. I'm still ready for the you know prize fighting level competition, and um, it also maybe showed us that he's a little hard headed because it's like you know. For me, it's like better safe than sorry. Right. Why? I mean, I don't understand. There's not a real good reason why you should do that fight without doing a tune-up. Nobody in the fan world was going to be pissed that you took a tune-up first. Right. And seeing everybody. How everybody saw that car accident. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, um, I don't know. This is a misstep. But it also shows me, too, that... Mm, he got a lot of yes men over there. He got a lot of yes men over there, guys. Because somebody should have been like, hey, will you wake the hell up? You cannot just get in here with Danny Swift Garcia, who's got a freaking power shot, power right hook from the gods, and think that you just finna just walk in there and just defeat him so easily. Yeah, even Keith Thurman came out uh, this week and was talking about uh, Errol. You don't have to be careful because Danny Danny hits hard. He said Danny hits a lot mm -hmm. uh a lot harder than um Sean Sean, Sean Porter. Mm -hmm. So Right. And even Sean Porter will admit that he's not known for his power. So just imagine if he'd have even had power in his punches during their last fight. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like we would have been looking at an entirely different outcome. Yeah. Cause Sean was not going down without a fight when it came to that WBC green belt. You know, he green belt. <laughs> yeah, he loved that green belt for sure. <laughs> All right, so we got Rob here. He says um, he's going back to the female fight. He says Senesa. Oh, there you go. Senesa went in there and did her job. Respect to Miranda for taking the fight for such short notice. But truth is, it was a mismatch. Yeah. And ultimately, fight was double-edged sword, unfortunately. Hashtag BPH. You're absolutely right. And then um, Louis says, women need to get paid now. I'm with you, baby. Give them the coins. Throw the coins at them. Get it on over with. Stop Stop trying to keep that shit low to um, appease these promoters. You know, that that's the only reason. Now. You know, I'm on to my last subject before we introduce our next beautiful guest. Okay. All right. Now, what I was going to tell you is that I had posted a video of Clarissa Shields going in on her nemesis, Miller, right? Mm -hmm. So, Miller gets up there and she sees the post because the video was a YouTube post. And Clarissa is breaking down why Miller really ain't on her level. Mm. So, you know, Boxing Playhouse, we are just trying to cover female boxing. Well, no, no good deed goes unpunished, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> because Miller, she gets on our page, Boxing Playhouse. Oh, my God. She had a, a serious message for us. I, I Did you see it or you didn't see no, it? No, I didn't even know. You didn't notice it? No, I didn't see that. Oh boy, she went in on us. Well, she, well, first of all, she called herself going in on Clarissa Shields too. But I mean, for me, I was just like, ah, I hmm. dare her. Hmm. 
And I just took up for her ass that Saturday, guys, on a different podcast. Um, they were asking about Caressa and if they if they were having that type of beef with each other and they were males, would there be more attention and more media coverage? And of course, the answer is yes. All right, but what what I'm trying to get to you at, I'm trying to find this here. But what I'm trying to get you to see is this is what happening. I took off a Miller in that conversation and I said, we need to start covering more than just one female in certain weight divisions at a time. We need more coverage in, of several boxing females in divisions so that you can see a matchup and you'll know who's who and you can get excited for it. Right. You can't get excited for a fight when you feel like you only know one boxer. So anyway, I got up there. I gave a little couple of, you know, interesting facts about Miller. I was, you know, basically saying this and that. Well, she came for me bad. She came for Clarissa bad, too. And I had actually um, wrote it down somewhere. I had, well, I had took a snapshot of it. Now I can't find it. Yeah. But basically, she called me a clown. She called you. She said, Boston Playhouse and Caressa Shields are clowns. I can't believe y'all peddling this BS. And oh, she went in so hard. I was just shocked. Like, is she talking to us? What is she saying? <laughs> And, you know, the beautiful Daniel was the one that pointed it out to me because I didn't even know she had responded. So wow. she she the one that sent it to me like, hey. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even know. <laughs> yeah, girl done went in on us for real, for real. Wow. Oh, here it is. I finally found it, guys. Uh... Raquel Miller. Clarissa is the clown, and so are you for pushing and believing this bullshit. But tell this clown to keep my name out her mouth unless she's talking and sending a contract. 100. So I was like, did she just call me a clown after I just got up there? And I freaking just, you know, I had just basically told her, you know, I, I had just told her that how I, I had just took up for her, basically, guys, on another podcast. I gave information about her. I said that she, you know, had a history with Clarissa and maybe that's the reason why there's some beef. And I'm just like sitting up there upset right now because like I said, no good deed goes unpunished. I'm one of the only, well, we're one of the only people or media sources that are like covering female boxes to this mm -hmm. level. And she gets up there and calls us clowns. She need to come on ladies night and discuss our issues well i'm glad you said that because <laughs> that i'm glad you said that because that was my only reply bad like well you can come on box and playhouse ladies night and you know speak for yourself right well naturally she didn't even respond to that <laughs> oh go figure you should have known she wasn't gonna respond to that so um let's see what rob has to say to that and Let's see. Hey, fam, I caught up. Oh, well, we already read that one. So Cora went back. Oh, well, I don't see that. Where's all the comments? Oh, boy. Hold on, guys. Uh, you know what it is? We got a lag on our like side tonight. So I'm having a hard time. I'm seeing it late. Right. Um, The comments. But let's see. Somebody said... Shout out to beautiful brawlers. Beautiful brawlers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, so somebody says, where are the drinks? Amber says, where's the drinks? Well, funny you should ask because we got it right here. And the keyword for the night. What's the keyword? Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, right. so that's the key word for the night. Okay, There's gonna be a lot of toast in the night then. Mm, you might be right. Because <laughs> we got some sexy ladies coming through tonight. And you know what I enjoyed the most about this situation here? Is they got something behind that beauty, okay? It ain't all beauty. Beauty is that's about some substance, huh? Uh, some substance, some meat, some 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 mm to it. Okay. Right, right, they got right. the brains. They got the, the, the tenacity, the courage, the integrity, 
Okay, they 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 got it all. They're a complete yeah, package. That's what makes you sexy. Right. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and bring our first guest here, and she's beautiful as well. She is the president of her company, which is also a media outlet known as Fox and Meets Beauty. Loopy. <laughs> Hi. Oh my God. Oh. How are you? What's up? Beautiful brothers. Oh, ooh, I now see now. I like that right there. Yes. Mm. <laughs> Cheers. Got Cheers. Going up. Oh, beautiful. It's beautiful. great to see you guys. Sakura, I love your style. I love your style. <laughs> the way you talk. Hey, and I do keep my man entertained. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Thank huh? you. Switch it up sometimes. Hey, you're talking some good stuff, but wait, I got a couple notes. I got a couple okay. notes. Okay. Oh, okay. She's speaking us now. <laughs> oh, so we're on Raquel Miller. So, you know, and when I actually I just talked to Hannah Gabriel, so I'm like, do you care? Does anybody care? And that's one of my questions. Does anybody care anymore? Does anybody care? Well, I, <laughs> Emilio doesn't care. So Emilio, my, she said, you know, nobody I care. Oh, okay. I don't care. Nobody cares. <laughs> and yeah, the men covering the bad news. Always the first to cover the bad news, you know. Yeah. I I didn't even post the fight that the Sunisa Naka. I didn't post it because I put in my story, but I didn't post it. The guys posting all the first all day, all day, <laughs> two two three days actually. The whole weekend they were posting. Yeah. Through so Monday, I kept seeing different posts. Then it was like, oh, the woman was you know the promoter's wife and. You know, yeah. somebody's gonna get in trouble for approving that fight and so a big media like they outlet, can't dig in deep, honey. <laughs> totally. A big media outlet put it out like six days later, and I'm like, you're like <laughs> stop. <laughs> even with, Not six days now. Even with the Ginny Fuchs, that situation, the guys quick. No one ever talks about her. We you know, we talk about her because she's an Olympian, but mm -hmm. you know, you know, I that's why I got a shout out. Boxing Soapbox, you know, they had her on maybe a week after the news broke about Jenny Fuge. She brought her on seven in the morning, never asked, asked a question. It was all about, you know, what she's doing in the sport, how she's prepping for Olympian, her backstory. Okay. That's right? Okay. I mean, so let's give them a too. Yeah. So, guys, Any make other notes? Sign up for them. Any other notes that I had? Because you had a good, I love what you talk about. Well, I mean, what did you think about? Let's go back and just see what is your thoughts on Spence versus Garcia? Spence versus Garcia? Yeah, do you think it's too soon for him to just be getting in there with another prize fighter without a tuna? You mean for, for Errol to jump in? Yes. Ryan Garcia? Mm -hmm. I don't know. People always talk about Ryan Garcia like he's not this, he's not that, he's an Instagram boxer. Let him show it. Oh, not Ryan Garcia, Danny Garcia. Oh, Danny Garcia. Yeah, and Errol. No, let it happen. If Errol thinks he can come back, that's right. Um, yeah, let him come in. Let him let him do what they want. You know, do, you all saw that video of his father, right? No, With what happened? Oh, you're talking about Angel? Yeah. Oh, no, I didn't see that one. What, oh what is he up to now? He just laughing. <laughs> That's what he does best. I mean, he's the he's the he's the real shit talker in that family. You know, he does all the beef and <laughs> somebody has to be, he right? To somebody has to be. My mm -hmm. sister, you had my sister on not too long ago, and she always says that I'm the nice one. So oh, she really? <laughs> she did your well, I think, um, the Dahlia Duran, the beautiful Dahlia Duran says something similar. You said beautiful. I said beautiful. You Dang said it. Beautiful. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the only other thing is, yeah, when it comes to Miller, she came after us right away. And we were not, we were like one of the only media sources besides you and a few, maybe like three other sources that are covering female boxing, you know, consistently. Not just when it's some negative news. Consistently and across the divisions and newcomers and I cover it all. And if someone comes to me and says, hey, can you put this up? Heck yeah, I'm gonna put it up. Some Muay Thai, some, you know, I'll do it all. I mean, we should be covering 
all of the fighters, you know. And we have we know a lot of the girls, amateurs that are just coming up in the pros. Of course, we're going to have them as well. Mm. A lot of girls coming up. Well, you know what? We got some fans. Um, they're more excited about how you look. They said, Loopy is beautiful. And that was Antonio Cruz. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> oh, boy, here we go again. Wait a minute. You just said beautiful. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> oh I got set up. He set me up, y'all. Mm -hmm. Now, Loopy, can you quickly tell us something about your company? What made you start it? And, and what are some of the goals that you wish to accomplish, you know, um, as you're moving through the company's lifespan? You know, I started officially the day before Thanksgiving. I'm coming up on three years. And my sister is Blanca, and she's the creator of Beautiful Brawlers. Beautiful. It's going to have that. There she go again. We're going to be drunk, y'all. Oh, man, I might have went too far. <laughs> And Blanca's been doing this a long time. But, you know, I'm her sister. I've had my own journey. Okay. My own thing. I, I have a little boy with special needs. And first eight years was just dedicated to him. Mm -hmm. I started having more spare time about three years ago. And not only was that good news, he was doing great. It's so I'm like, what am I going to do? Because I'm a stay-at-home mom. What do I want to do? And I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to jump on board, partner up with my sister, and I knew the whole, and the whole was social media. It was a promotion. So it was promotion and it was fundraising because she puts on these shows, these annual Labor Day shows, okay. a ton of money. You know, um, we don't charge the girls. It's free. They're, they play, pay enough with travel expenses and everything. So I helped her. I wanted to fundraise and promote Beautiful Brawlers and the girls. And it got bigger than that because... I know a lot of the girls coming up through beautiful brawlers and then I wanted to talk about them and then they start going pro and I'm like, Oh my God, the pro. And it just snowballed into this full time. You know how it is. It takes a lot of time. Yeah, definitely. And, and I so, know it's hard for men to get sponsorships. It has to be even more difficult for the female. God, it was really tough. So I started with, okay, I think it was uh, one of the shows and I said, how much are your belts? And she told me how much your belts are. I go, I'm going to get it covered. So I went to friends, friends who own their beauty salons, waxing. Um, we have a baker. Um, we have a, uh, somebody who wrap a, a cut man. I mean, we have, so it built. My brother-in-law who owns his business in the Philippines. And I just told everybody, pitch in this amount so we can cover the belts. And that started. And, and as it grew, I mean, I got Clover to cover the breakfast for all the girls. I mean, it started where we <laughs> pancakes for in the morning after weigh-ins we made the pancake and then we got over to cover a yogurt bar and then you know you just start uh building on kind of helping my sister with expenses so okay. that, so that's where it started but then it started to fundraising for the girls for nationals i mean it takes a lot of money to travel it takes several thousand just to get there so i'd pick a handful and just start fundraising for them and raise money for each girl or we do fundraisers at Blanca's Jim Babyface, and we get gift baskets. We just we get food together, just raising money. This yeah. is like really interesting. I mean, because you're being very creative with it too. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and we've really. seen that more female boxers might be interested in looking you up to help them in the future. Mm -hmm. Being that you kind of have a, like a really good niche for it. Yeah, I mean, I give a lot of advice on it. I think where I want to go, I mean, we want to start a nonprofit or a foundation, something where we can get the girls to nationals, uh, the Olympians, the money that they need to travel. We had our girl, we did, and she is our girl, Lupe Gutierrez. She's a 2020 Olympic mm -hmm. national champion. She comes to yeah. the in Sacramento, and she's the face of beautiful brawlers. We've known her since she was 10. Now she's 20. She's the Olympian. I mean, so girls like that, we'd like to um, start a foundation, start a nonprofit. We were looking at it and then COVID hit and everything, you know, the breaks. So to raise money for these kind of girls, you know, so they could take it all the way. Once you hit that certain level, you know, it's a springboard and then it becomes a difference who has the money and who doesn't. Right. I mean, well, so what else are you doing to help um, on the media side of things? You know, 
I am also, I had an opportunity, to, I co-host a two-minute round, and that's called Email Boxing, and that is with Felipe Leon out of Tijuana, and David Avila, who is a sports, uh, Hall of Fame sports writer, and these are the biggest games out there with Felipe running Tijuana, and David Avila running the rest. They gave me an opportunity, you know, that I got, and I'm going to say, I got through Beautiful Brawlers. Good thing, Amelia, your head. <laughs> Beautiful brothers. I can look at you. Know, <laughs> you know, I mean, that's my sister, but it's also her organization that, you know, one day, I mean, we met David. We, you know, we went to LA, went to some fights, and I made a point to meet him because, you know, when you're out there, you want to meet whoever and do everything. So yeah. After that, I mean, he, we, you know, always in contact, and he said, I'd like you to be on the show. And I was like, oh, I always wanted to be on the show so we could talk about what we do. And he goes, no, I think you misunderstood me. I'd like you to co-host. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> okay. He's like, I don't want to do it, but I'm going to do it, you know? And uh -huh. it's completed a year. And I don't think I'm going to leave because I'm hooked. I'm hooked on boxing, you know? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's a cool direction. Yeah. How sometimes when you're helping so many other people do things that you actually end up finding something that's your real passion yourself. Yeah. And you know, I, I appreciate the opportunities. I'm I, I laugh with my sister because I say, you know, I I'm not gonna take all your contacts and uh take <laughs> I'm not gonna like use you and just like say because I see how it happens with her. But sisters is different. You know, we have a really great relationship. We're great partners. She doesn't look at what I do. I mean, I do my own thing and I'm promoting her. You know, she doesn't have to micromanage or anything. She's like, you know, because sometimes you have to look over what people are doing when they're representing you, you know? Yeah, but, absolutely. All absolutely. right. And we love Bianca too. She, like you said, she was our former guest and we just had a blast with her because she liked to tell it like it is too. So she is know. fire. She is fire. And I think you know, like the chicken nugget. <laughs> oh my gosh. And that's why we make a good pair because we're like, you know, when people don't want to talk to her, they come to me. Or, you know, they don't want to come to me. They, do. they go to her. And then if they can't tell us apart, they block us both. Wow. <laughs> and I'm like, funny. You know, we can't tell us apart. So they're like, both of you blocked. <laughs> now, I want to know. Oh, go ahead. You had a oh, question? Who's the oldest between the two of you, Loopy? She is. She is? I think it's just two and, two and a half years. Two and a half years. Oh, okay. And I also, I want to know who's your favorite fighter. Who's my favorite fighter? I think, God, there's so many good fighters. You know, I really like Sinise Estrada. Really like Sinise Estrada. Okay. I like little girl. I mean, you got to say Clarissa Shields because she's just everything that we needed and we wanted with two gold medals and just right. Yeah. From you know, and she's just and she's herself, and we know where she's come from. It's just a great story. You know, French on cruise. With everything she's just been through, and she's a good person. She's one of our sponsors. Yes. Oh, that's great. There's some great fighters. I mean, you know, Martha Salazar, and I'm going back, and she's one of ours, and my sister and her went all the way. Mm -hmm. It's more than being a fighter. Not only is she an amazing heavyweight, she's a great person. I kind of look at the whole picture, you know? There's yeah. some great fighters when you can't decide, you know? I know. You just mentioned a lot of them. Like, so who should we be looking at? that is right now in the amateurs but is about to turn pro i mean i have mm -hmm. one in mind but mm -hmm. who else do you do you see coming up that we should definitely be focused in on and watch out for in the future so i'm looking at i'll start with who's just starting the pros i mean there is there's serena mccoy she's three and oh now three three and one now i mean she's an amazing fighter clean boxer she's a Five-time beautiful brawling champion again, one of the faces of beautiful it. brawling. <laughs> Daisy, get that drink ready. <laughs> and I think it's Serena's last fight. I'm not gonna pay attention to it. I think I posted some of it. I think um, she took that fight. She won the fight, you know. But she's in Mexico. 
Oh, okay. And you're talking about Miss Black Rose. Yeah, Miss Black Rose Boxing. Yes. You had it on. That was a yes. good job. Yes. Oh, yes. I had a problem. I couldn't pronounce her first name. It was. <laughs> I know. She held her composure very well. It's Zarina. But see, that's another. Yeah. Look at the whole picture. She she speaks very well. She knows how to promote. Yes. She gets a little. Uh, she can shit talking a little. But hey, that's. <laughs> Notice, right? There's um, there's things, I don't mind somebody talking the way she does when she's talking about things that are deep she's for not. her age. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Like that age. Well, yeah, we've known, her, we've known her a really long time. Okay. You know, we've watched her grow up, you know, through coming to the shows and we know her story and, you know, she's a beautiful girl and she should be everything that she can expire to be, because she can be really big in this world, you know, given the chance. I know she wants to go to an Ivy League. I mean, I hope she really gets there. We've uh -huh. her, fulfill her dreams too, you know I mean? We try to do things the yeah. same way. We try to we help the girls out, engage, you know, mentor. I mean, there's, it's a, there's also Amy Salinas. She's three and zero out of um, Albuquerque, New Mexico. She's a girl who she fought, um, who did she fight? Saldana, and that's somebody that Lorraine Villalobos, I think she knocked her out, but this girl, Amy Salinas, this girl has more experience. Amy came and just did the same thing. I mean, these are girls that, she's another promising girl. Now you saying her name is Ava or Amy? Amy, Amy Salinas Amy. out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Her dad and her bro her dad and her, his brother trainer. You can't tell those two apart either. We had them at Beautiful Brawlers. Oh, she got us again. Mm -hmm. Who picked who picked the word? You know the naughty girl. Who picked the word? Beautiful. I picked the word, but I didn't know you were gonna try to get us this much. <laughs> <laughs> That's who we represent. Well, we're on the lookout for our girl over here, Taz. She's about to have her debut. And she had a sparring yes. out. Yes. Yes. Taz Brown, guys, watch out for her. Yes. She was doing sparring with this, you know, huge guy. And 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 it was just like doom. Doom. Like you can just yeah, hear I saw that. I saw it. Yeah, yeah. check her out. She's another, one. she's another one, right? About to step in that ring. I mean, she's got a great team with Laura Ramsey and yes. Yeah. yeah, they have had a big dream boxing. They got big dreams and they're going to fulfill them. You know, uh, that also reminds me, um, Kim Carlson, she is going pro as well. She's out of Rick Ramos Boxing, who's Jessica McCaskill's dream. Yeah. So we've got another one. I mean, Kim coming up and he has a uh, Summer Lynn and she is also a 3 0 and she's out of Body Shop Boxing. So there's a lot of talent coming out. And what's so exciting is that when. It's all starting to come out. And these girls come from OTC. They come from great. You know how the training is now. They get the mental, the physical. They have teams around them. The girls have us, have us around them as a team. And when they come out, they're going to come out in droves. They're going to come out in clicks. They're going to come out ready to go with great confidence. And they're going to freaking move these. They're going to give the pros a real run. And I'm really excited about it. You know, boxing slowly coming back. Yeah. Yes. Go. yes. We're ready to support them. We're ready. I mean, we've been engaged with them the whole time. You I know? mean, it's exciting too. It's exciting because we are seeing. I can. I feel like there's more interest starting to um, be about as far as boxing fans wanting to mm -hmm. see females box. So I'm pretty excited yeah. about that, and I'm mm -hmm. also excited about some of these male matchups that um, a couple of the um, you know, showtimes and the zones, mm -hmm. ESPNs, like they're starting to do some really good matchups right now. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm like really excited about boxing. Um, I can't wait till we can get back in the audience though. That's all my. <laughs> I know. And you know, to be honest, I I I don't follow too much uh, male boxing. Just some yeah. of my favorites. So, but lately, um, last month I've been trying to like just look and see and keep up. Yeah. Favorites for guys. Who are the guys that I want to follow? You know what I mean? So I'm just trying to, you know, if we can get back to, um, like, the amateurs and the pros, we have some stuff going on. I don't know if you've noticed, like, 
Cecilia Brackis has been working with an amateur, Jessica Guerra. She's out of um, Rialto, California, and she's a number one in the USA at her at 154. She's a member of Team USA. She's a member of our team. We also have a team, uh, the beautiful oh, okay. international team. So we have a team. She's been to say it. Uh huh. Beautiful oh, girl. The beautiful brawlers. Uh oh. And shout out to your uh -oh. sister because she is really getting us worked up tonight. It's our, did you do uh, this? Too? <laughs> so that's our international team. Um, so Jessica, I mean, we're stoked. She's working with um, Cecilia Brackis. And then we have working with um, Jessica McGaskill is the number one at, I think she's 125, Sierra Martinez. And she's out of Rhode Island and she's working over there. So not, and I want to give props to my sister because behind the scenes, my sister does a lot of stuff. And she actually hooked that up for young Sierra. So to see... Um, it's kind of like pro versus pro. You got Cecilia versus Jessica, which is going to be an unbelievable fight. But you also, on the uh, on the down low, you got Jessica versus Sierra. So who's going to win this, you know, because the amateur and their friends, you know? But it's... Mm. You you know, know, I'm really excited about those matchups, too. And mm -hmm. knowing the type of, you know, pedigree that's training these girls. Yes. I mean, you can't really get much better than a mm -hmm. Cecilia mm -hmm. Braggis. Um, yeah. He also has a fight coming up too, so mm -hmm. I mean they could be in there training together at the same time. It's like a yeah. recipe for success, if you ask me. Mm hmm. Seriously, you know we when I said we had an international team in twenty what twenty eighteen. So so twenty eighteen, my sister goes, hey, you want to put a team together? So I said, yeah. So we pit we picked eleven girls. 11 or 12 girls, and Canada was having a show. So we went as a team. We just told the girls, all you have to do, get your flight, and we're going to take care of everything else. We go to Airbnb. We did everything. Got them in this big house and went to Canada. And we freaking yeah. beat their butts. I mean, we had, what, 11 girls and 12 wins? So this is the kind of stuff that um, we're doing. We're trying to, you know, just keep moving these animals. Just have to give them the experience, like the shows, the platform to showcase their skills, and now they're all now they're all growing up. You know, we went to the Louisiana uh, the Olympic trials in December because we had some girls and Lupe. Nice. Yes, yeah, so we had Lupe competing. We had uh, Daisy Bamberger who was competing nationally. We had Mariana Gonzalez also in the Olympic trials. Um, Alexis Gomez in the Olympic trials. So we had we we're going there. You know, I mean, it was exciting. It was nerve wracking. Blanca was actually. My sister was in the, the corner at the 2020 Olympic trials, the finals, and they did it. Her, Coach Abel, and Lupe won. She, she became the Olympian. So, but as we were sitting there, because it was a seven-day deal, me and my sister sitting there front and center. You what, know, she won a gold? What's that? She won a gold medal? or? Um, yeah, Lupe Gutierrez, who's oh. over here in NorCal, she won the gold medal, which means... She fought throughout the week and she became the Olympian for the 2020. Now it's canceled, right? I mean, well, it's. Yeah, I've postponed. Hopefully yeah. it's just postponed until 2021, right? And mm -hmm. that was going to happen in Japan. I mean, they've already made all the preparations and build all this infrastructure yeah. to support this. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm hoping that they are still able to pull this off because there's a lot of hard working athletes that's really you know, deserving to have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. You're talking about mm -hmm. every two years. That's a long time to be yeah. waiting. It is. And anything can happen, you know, with the girl. Yeah. Out, anything can happen and changes will be made. Yeah, definitely. Hey, Amelia, you got your uh, boxing uh, playhouse hat? Oh, okay. Yeah, he got on another hat. Oh, you got a brawlers. Uh, oh, no, you got beautiful. Ooh, I like is it that. boxing meets bra um, beauty or is it it's beautiful, beautiful brawler. Oh, like that, that's nice. And that's what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like that. What you drinking, Luby? What you drinking? I think I want one of those. I think that's the I'm cutest drink. I'm, I'm a beer girl. I'm a beer, beer girl, Amelia. Drinking what? Beer. You over there drinking these beers? What's going on? Uh -huh. I, I next, I next <laughs> guess might like beer. Hey, so we, one of our sponsors is, um, and good friends of ours, so they do this, um, it's Echo Land and Linda Hawk, their uh, Hawk design, they okay. do reading, they're Lakota, 
You're Native American, and she does all, all this is beading. Oh, nice. I couldn't tell that. Yeah, it's all beading. You know, we, we, we do, we also do something called um, Box of the Month. And actually, we just stop it midway because there's nothing happening. So every month, and we've been doing this since I started, um, me, we'll look at, say, January. We'll see what everybody did in January, and it's just starting. And then me and Blanca will talk, and we'll say, who's our box of the month? And every, then, same for February. So we've been doing it two and a half years. We just started, stopped in June. And when we pick somebody, they get stuff like, this is more beatings. And she does all this stuff for us, you know? That is cute. Like, she has, like, a little extra uh. gift in there. Yeah, so we do Martha Salazar. I this year I printed out a bunch of mini picks, five by sevens, and I sent them to her, and she signed them all with with a quote. And mm -hmm. then we have something like that. We give them wraps, we give them a t-shirt, and we do this every month for the girls. You know, we keep them. They deserve something for their hard work, and we're here to you know to give it to them. A nice little gift box. I mean, can you imagine you get a cute little gift box with? Just wraps and teas and stuff. I mean, yeah, that's so cute. I gotta have that hat though. I, I think I want the hat, yeah. and I think I want the shirt to match that you got that you're wearing. So yeah. go ahead and send me the invoice. We might we might have to give you a little care package. <laughs> oh, I love care packages now. See, but you, know, you, know, with that. you know, we that during um COVID, that's all we did. Like we we had some contests. We had three or four contests. One was a daddy-daughter challenge. Have a workout with your dad. Send us a clip. This last one we're having, we haven't picked the winners yet. We're going to announce the littles. We did a sparring contest. So we're like, send us your best sparring contest, best sparring, and then you win, and it's beautiful. Purple gloves with 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 the logo on. I'll slow you down. With the logo on it. What the logo say? What's that? What the logo say? It's gonna say beautiful brawlers. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think Emilio is liking to drink a little too much. <laughs> so they get the gloves, they get wraps, they get everything like a headband. I mean, the whole thing. And we got over 60, we probably got about 75 entries. Uh -huh. I mean, littles from eight to 12, we're gonna, you know, categorize it 13 and up. And we got a bunch of elites. So, I mean, that's what we've been doing, too, during COVID. Just keeping girls engaged, keeping ourselves engaged, you know? Yeah. Just trying okay, to... So we got... Let's see what these guests are saying here. You got some guests here. Oh, somebody... Louis says, love them sisters. <laughs> and then the Women's Boxing Channel says, hey, guys. Hey. Great to listen to two great shows. Host three with Familio, but he don't say much. <laughs> <laughs> Right Everyone is right. When yeah. the right time, I'll say something. Because <laughs> it's important. Yeah, listen. Then we got Bianca. She says, Daniel Vasquez, oh, um, no Pooh Bear. Blank is just talking to you. She's talking to Speaking of Vasquez, we got No No coming up with her fight, too, baby. Oh. No yeah. No. Yeah. No, I mean, last time when Bianca was on, we brought her up and, um, that's when Bianca was saying, oh, she slept over our house before when she fought in California. <laughs> yeah. So we all, we, like, it's a small boxing community. I'm so it happy. Is a small boxing community. Community. Say that again. It is a small community, and they all roll through Babyface through her gym. They all come through. Okay, Babyface. I'm liking that, too. Y'all got some cute names over there. The marketing <laughs> is insane. What is that? The marketing is insane. I like the brand. Yeah. yeah. She has but I was gonna good. say I love the fact that No No has gotten this um chance, uh, and she's gonna be on the zone um the zone actually for this. Mm -hmm. She is. She yeah, is. So I can't wait to see her in that one. Um, let's see. That's gonna be a good one. And you know, again, with these two girls, they're they're they've been sparring with amateurs as well. So Marlene's been sparring with five-time national champion Nicole Ocasio, and No 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 is sparring with um. Oh, she just had it up today. The name. Yeah, of she's sparring. Oh, Mar I sparring with uh, Raina Telez. And she's like number three. She's Team USA. Telez, yes. I know no sparring with Nicola Costio. So, what's beautiful to see is you see these pros working with the amateurs and not saying anything and not saying anything negative, but you're right. looking at where it's going. Who's the, you know, the. The amateurs are the ones to work with. You know what I mean? We're not. Yeah. Not only that, 
look at the geographic locations. I mean, it's California or it's Florida, mm -hmm. baby. You got mm -hmm. to states in it in order for it to make sense. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we got to take a quick break here because we got to get our sponsors in, Bianca. I mean, Loopy. <laughs> no, no. Sorry. Okay. So. First of all, we got TNK Boxing Promotions. Okay. Yes, and TNK Auto Collision. Those are our first sponsors. We got Brittany Photography. Brittany. Brittany is also in the house tonight. And then we got um, the lovely car washing detailing service, which is Marion Moody's company. Making it's called it Making It Happen. Yeah, Making It Happen. You want to ride Mobile. to look good and spotless and sparkling. I'll yeah. add Mary. Yeah, and get that Rona out of your car. Remember, we gotta get yeah, that. Get yeah. Rona out that car. Rona be hiding in people's cars yeah. when they going in Make and out of car places. Rona free. Yes, and then um, let's see. I think we also have. Um, let's see. It's called Health Helping Hands Nursing Care. Right. They also do that. They go and help um, you know senior citizens in our area, mm -hmm. and um, they also do. Great meals for like if you want to do all natural and healthy meals. So shout out to all those people and thank them so much for you know supporting Boxing Playhouse. Definitely. And now we're gonna also introduce our next guest too. I hope you're ready, Loopy. And you just let I hope, I hope everybody's ready. Oh, okay. So <laughs> I know you have a show coming up later on. So yeah. that's Yes. Go ahead and tell everybody what time that is and where they can find it before so, I So um, 7.30 p.m. California time. It's a two-minute round. You can find it on the two-minute round um, on Twitter. You can find it on any on a lot of podcasts they carry the two-minute round. And I also have the link um, on Boxing Meets Beauty, which is on Instagram and Facebook. Okay. So that was a great and you just said beauty again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're ready for Jason Rain. Oh. So, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, we want to introduce the Women's Hall of Famer. Okay. Women's International Boxing Hall mm -hmm. of Famer. The three division world champion. The oh. face a boxing for Europe, the Bulgarian American, beautiful, sexy, talented, and fierce Daisy Lane. Hi. Hi. Oh, Daisy. Hi. 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 Hey. So good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see all of you. Hi, <laughs> Daisy. Well, thanks so much for being on the show with us. And I hope you like that intro. I I tried my best. I mean, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so lovely. It's so lovely that we uh, we were able to do the connection because it's a crazy time. How do you feel during the pandemic, though? Oh, girl, the pandemic has got me bummed because I have an immune issue. So I haven't been able to really go Ooh. that many places. So, <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm yeah. up there with senior citizens where it's like, stay home. Don't <laughs> say nothing to nobody. Don't bring you up. <laughs> don't let anybody get close to you. I, like, they got me in that category. So I just have to, like, relax and let um, Emilio handle everything outside of the house. <laughs> <laughs> Lupi, what you did uh, during this time was a tough there, one, right? You know, I was stuck. My husband's working from home. I was home with my kid, and now we start again next week. Summer's over. Oh, that's wonderful. I had a great time, actually. The first three months are really, I love it, because I realized I've never been at home for so long time, you know. I, can, you imagine, yeah. <laughs> can you imagine? I did travel so much uh, all my life, and... It was wonderful that I stay in one place, right? And I even uh, didn't know how many beautiful places I have around in my area where I live, which mean I find new things, you know, which is great. But now, slowly, slowly, I start to feel bored and I would mm -hmm. love to, try, start oh. to, to travel again, you know, if I'm honest. Right, that know? is, I miss <laughs> traveling. That's the one thing that has really got me, you know, bummed some days is like, 
right now I would be at the, you know, I don't know, the PVC card night. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, we to see where we were last year at this time when the Facebook reminds you. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. But what I want to get into with you is first is like how you began your career and was it from Bosnia that, um, or no, I'm sorry, Bulgaria that you originally um, resided? Yeah, I was uh, uh, born in Bulgaria, okay. but uh, in that time, uh, it was very, very bad time. So Bulgaria was ex-communist country. Um, I still remember when the communist system crashed. I was very little, uh, very young, you know. And I was the pioneer of women boxing, the first woman to start to do that. And it was very, very difficult time, you know. Women didn't have rights and nobody Mm -hmm. cared about women boxing. So actually I did start with track and field. And after that, when I was 18 years old, I decided I don't want to do this sport anymore. And I saw a demonstration of Taekwondo on the television and i say wow i love martial arts and i want to learn the philosophy i want to learn to defend myself to be strong and uh so i started my sport career so from taekwondo i became a european champion uh then i run to karate then to kickboxing and then into boxing you know so i did fight always out of my countries because there were not so many opportunity for uh, women in the martial arts in my country it was very very difficult time you know so when i travel through the world i make many contacts then then uh, my first time coming to the united states was the 1995 it was a long time ago and new york was my first uh, city that I saw it here in the yeah. US. Oh yeah, and I was so fascinated. Everything was so bright, big. It was in August, I remember. It was a very, very warm weather. I wasn't able to breathe because it's very humid there. You know how it's in New mm-hmm. York. And then I uh, won the tournament. It was Karate World Championship uh, in Poconos, Pennsylvania. Actually, that was my first world title uh in karate you know and i was very very fascinated from american people for this all enthusiastic um, emotional people they were more happy that i won the tournament than me you know and that was very very wonderful experience for me so then first time in that time i saw christy martin in u.s that she was very popular in that time. I mean, uh, she was the first lady that started under the contract uh, yeah. in U.S. television. So I yeah. saw first time women boxing. I never saw that before. And I just love it. And she looked beautiful. And, you know, <laughs> she, she fought like a lion. And yeah. I love that she had a big heart, you know. So. Yeah. When I saw her fight and uh, I read about her in the newspaper and I told my trainer, you know what, you know, my next goal is going to be that one that I want to be, that I want to go to the professional boxing and I want to I wanna be a world champion in boxing. So you know what, my trainer told me, Daisy, are you crazy? Nobody hear about women boxing in Europe. I mean, uh, wow. but I, I say America is not America. Uh, Europe is not America. I mean, that's uh, good luck to you, but uh, you you have to change your goals. I say no. If nobody hear about women boxing, then I will be the first one that they're gonna hear about it. So when I got back to Bulgaria, I start to do everything to make people to believe that boxing is good for women for self-defense and because I look too feminine and I always look like people thought I'm a model, I'm an actress, but nobody, you know, thought that I will go in this, in this uh, hard sport, you know, men dominate mm-hmm. sport. So nobody took me seriously at all, you know, and uh, I try everything to start from Bulgaria, but unfortunately in that time, nobody support me. Everything was against me, against me. And just my trainer, 
uh, my boxing trainer, who was a trainer of the national team of amateur boxing in Bulgaria, because in Bulgaria they had a very good uh, amateur uh, boxing team, uh, a lot of Olympic champions, world champion, European champion, uh, champions. Uh, I had a great trainer. He inspired me. And so I started to learn boxing, then train with the boys, with all guys, you know. Okay. And then I had the opportunity in Germany, uh, because I also studied in Bulgaria in the National Sport Academy, uh, to do after diploma qualification in the university in Cologne. And also in Germany, first time that was the country that started with Regina Hamelis, you know, uh, women boxing. So I was the second one that uh, got there. And I did achieve my goals in Germany. I fought for Germany because I didn't have any opportunity in, in my country to achieve what I wanted, you know. And then uh, I did fought with uh, a lot of uh, American ladies and make a lot of good contacts. I've been to U.S. many times. Um, in some period of time, Emmanuel Stewart trained me too. And so back and forth... Okay. I've been between Germany and US, and inside in me, I knew one day I will come to live here. <laughs> I was about to say, like, at what point did you, did you know, know in your mind, like, wow, I, you know, I think I'm gonna be wanting to live here one day. Uh, you know, I, I love the weather in California. Honestly, yeah. I was in love with the sun because in Germany, you don't see it. It's not sunny all the time. Most of the time, it's rainy, dark. Cold. Um, Bulgaria is also they have four seasons and in California the weather was all the time like a summertime for me and people are so happy you know because of the sun um, the weather was the first reason that I decided to live here and the second reason that in that time I had a boyfriend uh, American boyfriend of course the love yeah. the love made me to, to make the step here to come to US you know, I mean, um, also I, when I finished my sport career in Germany, uh, my manager there was the one who told me, Daisy, I know you very well. You need new goals. Um, go to U.S. because you will learn new things. You will achieve many other stuff. Um, and uh, I wanted to just leave Germany and to, to have this challenge, you know. Everything came naturally. Wow, I'm glad you said that, but I wanted the people, the fans that are watching us tonight to get a chance to see some of your work, ma'am, because it's something nice. that you're proud of. And yeah. we're going to just show a quick clip nice. of your work yeah. in the ring. <laughs> Daisy Lang. Hallo, herzlichen Glückwunsch. Bitte schön. Danke schön. Hier ist Daisy Lang. Hallo. Herzlich willkommen. Danke schön.
Wow! 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 I mean, Daisy, your career, your choice to watch Christy Market Martin and then decide to switch to boxing has taken you all over the world on television, modeling. I mean, you're beating ass all over the country, all over the world. Like, I mean, could you have ever in your wildest dreams imagined that one decision has caused you to be able to experience all these many things? <laughs> you know what? I always, always say it, everything happened for a reason, you know? Uh, everything happened for a reason. And uh, yeah, Christy Marty inspired me. That That is true. And I was very happy to meet her in person last year when we mm -hmm. all were to the ceremony yes. of uh, the International Hall of Fame ceremony in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I did say that too when they gave me the award, you know, mm -hmm. and that was a wonderful experience. But also now I'm very happy that many other women, they're coming behind you, you know, because it's not just about yourself, you know what I mean? Uh, I always say I was a pioneer and uh, mm -hmm. it was very, very, very hard, you know. Mm -hmm. Honestly, if you pay me money today, if you pay me millions, honestly, and you say, Daisy, do you want to do that again? I would say no. <laughs> because uh, it was very, very risky, right? Uh, but, you know, boxing was for me like my dreams come true. I did wake up with this idea and I slept with that idea because I really started with dreams, with idea. You know what I mean? So uh, when you're the first one, um, it's very, very difficult and hard way because you make the way free to others, you know? Mm -hmm. And I needed to risk my life many times to live by myself in a new country. I didn't speak the languages, the language in Germany. The, I didn't speak German, um, you know, and nobody wanted to watch women boxing in that time, you know? So you needed to have many qualities, not just to be a very good uh, athlete. Not just to be disciplined, self-confidence, you know, this yeah. whole quality to make you a champion. Because you, I believe you're born to be a champion, you know. But also is the fact, the luck of a trainer, that you can have a great trainer, but you can have a bad promoter, you know, because you want team. It's not in professional boxing, it's not just you. It's your team around. The, if the trainer is not good, if the promoter is not strong to give you a chance to fight, then the things will never work successfully. You know what I mean? And then, uh, of course, the, the luck of uh, opportunity, like my manager was very good in the entertainment industry and commercials. Like um, he had a company with, um, which means that he was able to sell me, like, your product, you know. Uh, I had a lot of sponsors. Like, uh, I had more of my money from sponsorships because the television didn't pay well for women. I, I remember that was such a tough time because my manager needed to do something for the promoter for free to get me in the program because nobody wanted to see women boxing, you know. I start from that point you know what i mean yeah. and then everything is uh, committed with your personality with the way how you need to represent yourself with the way how you need to talk like i say to all ladies um very important is you to be feminine in this men dominated sport you know because yeah. because then you can sell yourself better because uh, people want to see a beautiful woman or feminine woman who mm -hmm. can fight like a tiger, you know? Yeah. And it's not just mm -hmm. you to, to win, you to, to win and defend your belt. It's just about how you're going to make people to believe in you. How you're going to make this offense to be on your side, not to be against you. You know what I mean? And that's why it was a long process, my dear. It was not just me to go to the ring, prepare for the fight, win the fight. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, I was attacked from many from the press because the press was again women boxing. But my mm -hmm. medicine education, because I studied medicine and physical therapy, okay. which means yeah, which means that I was very good prepared 
to answer mm -hmm. the right questions, you know, with the right answers, you know. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. step by step, I want all PR people on my side, you know. And you know how difficult it is when you are coming from other country, uh, you to win everybody on your side in, in new country, you know. Because uh, Germany is a beautiful country and it's a good country for business, but people are very slow to believe with something new. I think if I did start my career direct in US, things will happen much more faster, you know? Okay. People here are more open to get the new opportunity, the new ideas of everybody, you know? Yeah. Uh, the freedom of opportunity, like uh, I like to say. You know what I was going to say? Um, that it's funny how you had to break down all those doors and stereotypes mm -hmm. over in Europe when now it's like a lot of U.S. women's boxers have to go to Europe to secure mm -hmm. those fights. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, without your pioneer spirit, I mean, I don't know who boxers would be fighting right now. I mean, because, you know, you have to, I mean, with the professionals, let's face it. I mean, I heard Chevelle Hallback speaking on it and mm. Chris Martin both saying, you know, well, you know, now you're going across seas a lot to get mm. the bigger purses, um, mm. and especially for like Chevelle Hallback's time period. Like, you know, she's like, he made way more money by going over there fighting. So I'd like to think that I now know somebody that was responsible for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you like, know, I, I'm very, very happy. I think right now this wall between Europe and U.S. gone. is gone, you know. It is good that uh, it is more commitment together between these two continents, you know. So yeah. like many European women are able to come here before the pandemic, of course, and many U.S. ladies, they work to Germany or to, to Europe to fight, you know, and that's wonderful to have a great commitment between these two countries because, um, you know, this is a, a beautiful sport, you mm -hmm. know, and I'm very happy that um, after my career, I see, I see many women they start to do the same what they did, uh, you know. I will be very sad uh, after I finish my career to see nobody coming behind uh, me, behind, <laughs> behind you, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't also, think you're going to ever be done with your career. How about that? <laughs> you're going to always be supporting and being um, one of the faces of boxing, women's boxing. Um, um, that you know, is something that I, you can't take, people can't take away from you ever. Mm -hmm. You know what? I I had a great career. Of course, I was married to my career in that time because uh, I always say to all girls, hey, nothing happened without you to suffer, you know? Mm -hmm. You cannot have both things in the same time, you know? But for personal life, you always have a time after your sport career. If you want to be a world champion, if you want to be in that level, you need to give everything in this period of time when you decide to be professional. Uh, in this time when I competed, it was no amateur uh, for amateur boxing for women. So I was one of the uh, women that we fought uh, um, boxing to become Olympic discipline in Germany. You know, um, and I'm so happy that uh, finally that happens. You know, so Definitely. I always uh, I'm very happy and I really prefer any woman who want to try to do boxing to do first her amateur career because then you have the possibility to learn um to have more experience in boxing you know and yeah. then to go to competition to have experience to meet new people to fight more uh, and then you have to decide do you want to become professional after that or not and i'm so happy that now the European Championship, World Championship, Olympic Championship. Like, um, I hope that next year the Olympic gonna exist because I was involved this year with the Women Olympic here from three countries. I mean, the good things right now, I have opportunity to choose US, Germany, or Bulgaria, oh or both. I will see. And How I'm, me? About? And, and, and and I'm very both. excited. Yeah, you'll be another. Um, that'll be another record you broke if you're able to <laughs> represent both um, teams in the upcoming mm -hmm. Olympics. You and know what? Yeah. 
say and then Lupi, did you have another question for um daisy you know maybe a comment but okay. i like how you um I mean, you get it. Maybe because we're from a different generation, and you're like, use your femininity, you know, because you have to use what it takes, right? And then you show them. Because we saw, I mean, look at you in the rain. You're a, a beast. I like to call it a beautiful beast. You're beautiful. You're so sweet. Uh, yeah, I'm different generation, and I'm always happy to hear your old story. And also, you have amazing story, uh, Lupi keep it doing because you know boxing gave to me a lot of confidence and i always uh, mm -hmm. compare boxing like uh, the regular life doesn't mm -hmm. matter what you want to do in your life open a business do something mm -hmm. be, be self-confidence and believe mm -hmm. in yourself and don't be afraid that you will fall down or something will run unsuccessfully because even if you fell down with something you will get up and you will try again or this fell down going to bring you to new opportunity and that's going to happen you know yeah. and, and that's why especially in this difficult situation with this pandemic uh, situation i had also very bad days can mm -hmm. you imagine person like me that travel all the time that is very social and mm -hmm. uh, in some point you need to be like you in jail in one place yeah. and you live i first time in my life i live day after day because you mm -hmm. cannot make plans, you don't know what is tomorrow, you don't know what's gonna happen, you to live normal, and mm -hmm. that's make you afraid, of course, make you to feel not well. But you know, I start to train boxing again, and I start to remember my old life as a professional boxer, because, mm -hmm. because when I train, um, the boxing helps me, uh, you know, to, to clean my body from all this negativity, all this negative energy. And yeah. you were laughing, but because the gym were closed and they're still closed, I saw the palms in front of my house, the palm tree, you know, and mm -hmm. I used the palm tree as heavy bag just to fix the punches, to do a few rounds, two minutes, you know, yeah. and to, to put this bad energy away from me because mm -hmm. I wasn't able to train with somebody. You need to train mm -hmm. with yourself. So I give just this simple example that boxing will help me all my life. Doesn't matter I'm not professional yeah. anymore. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter I'm a businesswoman now. I'm a lot in the entertainment industry. I always will support to all women, the young generations, uh, to train and, and this sport make me strong, make me to be a good person, make me to be positive. So mm -hmm. many benefit of the doubt, you know? And I said, if that helps me, I'm gonna help everybody, you yeah. know? And, and you can you. help everybody, because you're like, it, it's, some, it's beautiful to have somebody like you help that new generation. That's what makes the new next generation that are coming up. We talked about it earlier, all these amateurs that'll be pro one day, they have, People like you, people like me. I'm not a boxer. I was a ballet dancer, actually, but my dad was a boxer. So I grew up in the lifestyle. Amazing. They have a lot of people around them, and it's a great thing. So for the Olympics, what are you, um, what country are you, what are you doing? Are you coaching? No, I'm not coaching. Uh, I will be pro probably representative. I, uh, I will decide what exactly my position is going to be but anyway i will support women box you know are you going to work so with probably, any girls uh, have any of the girls reached out to you or are you going to reach out to any of the girls who are going to represent i mean like uh, right now with this all mess with the pandemic uh it's a little yeah. bit early to tell you mm -hmm. you know what is exactly is going to be but yeah. I'm very uh, excited the opportunity that he and US they gave to me or in Bulgaria and mm -hmm. Germany. And, uh, you know, um, when we came to this point, when we come to this point, uh, I hope first of all that the Olympic will exist because we don't mm -hmm. know yet. Uh, then I will decide uh, what exactly my position is going to be. Maybe we, I, I will love to give to all girls the medals you know and to say congratulations I know. And, uh, that, would be so that nice. will be very very good yeah, be exciting be. moment because mm -hmm. i always wanted to be in the olympic but in that time when i fought it was absolutely yeah. no olympic yeah. only professional mm -hmm. boxing actually no yeah. professional boxing it was nothing <laughs> we got some people that have some comments for you so 
we have women's boxing channel they want to know um you made eight movies and do you plan to make any more <laughs> i had actually more than eight movies but honestly oh. i'm the most lazy person uh, with <laughs> social media and internet ways and i have to put so much materials and shows and i'm db and these all channels and um, even i supposed to do a movie in japan before that all happens and i had a big action part Oh, with nice. the, yeah, so well, you can yeah. do some stunts then too, huh? I mean, um, I did my own stunts by myself, but sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I need to fight with the director because he always tell me you can hurt yourself. Oh, oh. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and um, I did learn that in movie industry, uh, you depends from other people because you know in boxing it's a dangerous sport that you can lose your life if you're not in uh, you know 100 percent focus but you're the boss from you is depend you're gonna win the fight you're gonna lose the fight in the movie industry is the opposite one it was difficult challenge for me that you need to work with a team i mean you depends from everybody on the set you depends from your partners they're gonna make it to look better if they're not good you're gonna look worse from the makeup person, from the hairstyles, you depends from everybody. Uh, and also, I had to learn that um, I learned that that uh, I wasn't able to do my own stunts all the time. I had a stunt double sometimes because um, you know it will cost a lot of money for the production if you hurt yourself. And um, but I met through the movie industry many many interesting people, uh, very nice people actually. Um, I make a lovely contact, a good team, and I, I will not stop to do that. Uh, that is not my priority, like uh, many people want to do only this because I'm a businesswoman. Uh, but uh, uh, so far, when the situation hopefully get better, uh, I will continue to do uh, this too. Well, Emilio has a question for you now. Mm -hmm. Daisy, I know boxing is such a brutal sport, and then you said you've done some stunt work. Um, I was just going to ask you, what's, what's some of the um, injuries that you sustained from, from either or? Oh, nice. Could you say again, because I, I couldn't hear well? I was going to yeah. say that I know boxing is a rough sport. I, I just wanted to know what, what were some of your injuries that you sustained from boxing or being a stunt woman? Uh -huh. So, okay, uh, I hear first you say boxing is brutal sport. It is not brutal sport. There are many brutal people. I mean, let me correct you. You know, okay. boxing, <laughs> boxing is intelligent sport. Boxing is intelligent sport, and you need to use your brain, you know, yeah. to win mm -hmm. with your brain. There are many, many people, they're brutal, you know, that had nothing to do with the sport. Uh, seconds, I didn't have too many injury in boxing. I'm telling you why. Because when you do extreme sports, you're 100% focused on what you're doing, you know. And then the risk you to get hurt is very small. But if you ask me, did I get uh, injury in this sport? Yeah, I did. But for this all long career, honestly, it was not bad. I have only two fights that I had some bruises in my face. Uh, the one fight was because I had injury in my legs um, during the fight, and that was unexpected things because, you know, movement in boxing is important. Uh, then I won the fight, but I had some bruises. And the second fight that I got bruises was because uh, my second father, my uh, stepfather passed away, and I wasn't able to focus because it was exactly before uh, the fight that I did. And, you know, when you're not focused, you're going to lose the fight, right? right? Because you don't have your brain. Um, about the movie industry, I've never been a stunt woman. Uh, you know, I've been an action actress, but I did my own stunts sometimes, like I said. Um, I had a good uh, offer to be a stunt woman, but I, I just don't want to go that direction. But I have, uh, I respect a lot the stunt people. They're the people that make the movie to look good. They risk their lives, you know, uh, and go to this all difficulty to make the actors to look good. Uh, I respect a lot that industry and this department. 
Okay, Miss Daisy. You know what else we're gonna ask you? Rob wants to know that he saw since he saw a lot of red in your video and you have on red now. He wants to know: is that your favorite color? Mm -hmm. Yes. You can see me now. I'm with the red yes. again. <laughs> uh, you know oh, what? Mm -hmm. um, when I was Rob, when I was a child, oh, red, uh, red. I did love the red color. Maybe because I'm Aries, they say it, when you Aries, uh, the, the red color is typical for fire. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I I don't believe too much in astrology, honestly. Especially uh, basic stuff, yes. But uh, I always think that the way you live your life make your character better not the stars right right uh, that's my opinion uh but many things for you know like a base like i did say it is they're right uh i did love the red color because um that is the 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 color of the champions uh because that is the oh. color of love uh and i believe in love it's, uh, it's important uh, for all of us and everywhere in the world, you know. And that's why I still love this color. And even my car is red, too. You oh, know, just well, let you know. Not red. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad I chose the right color tonight, Daisy. You know what I'm saying? You know, I can <laughs> I'm see. I'm a champion in spirit. You see? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a champion in spirit, Miss Daisy. So we also got Silky Wilkie. He's a middleweight boxer, and he lives over here in Tampa, Florida. And he so, wants, yeah, Silk. Silky Wilkie. Silk. 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 Do you have any tips for people that's, you know, boxing and they want to transition over to something like entertainment um, industry? Absolutely. Um, very often. Um, I mean, I didn't plan to go to entertainment industry, honestly. Uh, but uh -huh. on my, yeah, this came very automatically um, because of my fights, I had so many fans. You know, I'm very proud to say that I have fights that I fought uh, in front of 25,000 people, you know, it's uh, mm -hmm. and um, very spontaneous. Um, you know, many celebrity came to my fights, and uh, very often producers uh, like to see boxing and they invite you as a champion um, to the action movies, you know. Uh, so I get my first invitation, you know. Uh, and so I get the opportunity, you know, to be to go to, in that direction. Uh, I didn't plan that. Uh, of course, um, when you have some name in any sports, it's much more easy because um, that's open doors. Uh, you to have opportunity to go to some movies or to be a stunt person or, or to do something, uh, represent some products. I mean, you get many opportunities so far when people are able to see you on television. It's make more easy you to have a contract of this and you can see this all famous ufc fighters or uh, some many famous boxer been in many movies too you know it's not yes. just me you know so it depends uh, what you like to do you know and okay. like i always say never well, be afraid I mean, to try i feel like you might have got like a little more uh, extra doors open because you're so Sexy, honey. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Nothing wrong with that. Now that leads me to my last question for both of you ladies. My <laughs> last question right now, Miss Daisy and Loopy, has to do with sex and ladies boxing. So I heard you guys saying earlier that you should use what you got to get what you want. <laughs> <laughs> but what I want to know is when is it too far when if you say you saw someone and they are just going way over what is defined as sexy for most people and they have now gone over to raunchy what do you think should be said to those people what is the formula for success how do they know when to stop and rely on their skills where is that boundary guys <laughs> Oh, you want to start with me? Well, have you seen? Well, I deal with a lot of amateurs. 
So when I speak to them about their social media, I want them to keep it clean, keep it boxing. Don't, if you don't want to talk about yourself, let us. But if we're going to talk about the pros because it's they're older, there's okay. something going on right now on Twitter with Ava Knight, uh, Sula Murbina, and Emily Bridges from Australia. And they were talking about, Ava said, hey, if you're willing to put yourself out there sexually, and then you better be willing to take the criticism. So um, Ebony Bridges out of Australia. I mean, do you know what I'm talking about, Sakura? Uh-uh. She's 4-0 out of Australia, and she's a little blonde. She's a cute little blonde, and she's tough, only 4-0. But she likes to go to her weigh-ins. I mean, she's in a bikini or she's in lingerie, and she's cute. Oh, okay. So she, she has a lot of class, a little so, bit. Yeah, so, and also Sulem likes to go in her bikinis and they look great. But there's been some people really coming out and kind of dr trying to drag them on how they look. And they're really talking about, well, we should be able to, if we think we're hot, we think we're sexy, then we should be able to go out there, be feminine, be beautiful, and be able to kick ass in the ring. There's nothing wrong with that for some of the older, more uh, older seasoned pros. No. If yeah. If it's not your style, you don't have to do that. You can go, but there's nothing wrong with going out with a bikini. We've seen some other girls just recently in these last few fights. They're wearing, um, they're not going, I think they're afraid to show the sexuality or yeah. the femininity. So there's got to be, I mean, <laughs> we're not doing it wrong. do it. You know what that means. Like you're looking skank, okay? Where is the line? <laughs> um, hello? <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> we got you. What, what's your take on it? I mean, uh, what I will say is uh, that is everything what is connected with sexuality is depends which direction you will understand this word, you know, because that's very individual, you know. Mm -hmm. um, for me, Boxing is men dominate sport, mm -hmm. and I think that a woman should be not showing too much skin to go in that direction because then, especially, I don't judge anybody and I don't that judge women, they were in Playboy and they were world champion. That's personal choice. But uh, my experiences and what I want to say is that when one woman doesn't show everything, when, especially when she has a name, you know, then it's more interesting for the men imagination, for the men world, and it's more taken seriously and has more chances to get, um, to get sponsors uh, because of that, you know. Um, I'm not against this. I never had naked picture in my whole career uh, because I don't want everybody to see me, even I have the body for that. But no. I had many sexy pictures that you uh, are able to see something, but you have imagination because you don't see something. And no. because I had many sponsorships, I had a very big company and they pay me very good money. Even I want to tell you that I even I had a chance to be in James Bond 2001. And because of that, uh, I, I have to cancel this because of my contracts and of serious uh, um, sponsors that I had. I always think one woman is more interesting when you don't show everything because then uh, everything will go in different direction. I think that is a serious mm -hmm. sport. And mm -hmm. every woman who want to be a professional or to want to do career should be taken seriously because mm -hmm. then uh, people are going to respect you more and then you're going to make uh, um, better for, for yourself. Uh, your sexuality is better you to share with your boyfriend. It's your personal life yeah. and, and that is private. That's why mm -hmm. you have a private life. But it's not good, I think, my opinion, you to to show yourself everywhere you know uh, okay like, uh, well you know? i'm saying all this but i mean we got fans out here this is boxing playhouse players so they want to see exactly what you think is <laughs> you know acceptable we got mm -hmm. some pictures of lovely beautiful sexy daisy lane let's <laughs> i do <laughs> Beautiful. Yes, I Beautiful. Know. 
All right, man. Oh, 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 oh okay. Yeah, it's beautiful. I love it. Oh, I like I, I like, I like the boots. boots. Oh, that's I love cool. it. I love it. <laughs> but, but I'm not, but but I'm not naked, yeah. right? Uh, that's different. <laughs> yeah, you look beautiful. They you were look all beautiful. Face with me, right? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, there we go. That one's nice. I love it. That's what I like. I like yeah. it. Ooh. I love it. I love it. That's Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so what else you were holding in that 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 okay, one picture? Right there. <laughs> love it. That's just beautiful. Yeah, that's WBC. Mm -hmm. Look, uh, um, you know, uh, I agree with Lupi too, and I, uh, I I agree with you girls and whatever. Like, what I wanted just to say is, one woman should never forget is a woman. And, mm -hmm. and, and the, the, the things that you win is to be a woman and feminine. Because honestly, nobody wants to see two men fighting each other. You know? <laughs> and, and I will say, really, that can bring sponsorships. That can bring, um, you can get mentor for many other girls. Because most of the girls are afraid to have a broken nose. They think that way, to have bruises. Because mm -hmm. that is the first connection that people think when you say and you motivate girls to go to, to be in the ring and to train boxing, mm -hmm. they don't know what is this. They're watching you and they say, I want to be like you. Look, she's feminine. She doesn't look like a man. So I want to be like her, right? Mm -hmm. So that is the point. Like, I have to learn too to dress. I have to learn too to put makeup on me because I didn't have honestly these habits in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. I didn't like it to have dress. I always love it to have pants, you know, to be with sports shoes and to mm -hmm. be with the boys around, you know. And you became a Tommy boy too because you don't pay attention. But when I started to do my sport career, uh, because of my managers, and I said, you will never win that way because nobody will like to watch your fights. However, that he told me, Daisy, it's people, however, don't like women boxing. And you need to make them to believe that that is a, a good sport and will not broke the feminine side of one woman you know i i have to learn from uh, to start from there too you know and, and that's why it depends what you choose do you want to have sponsors do you want to make money you yeah. know and uh, then when you look feminine you have more chances to have sponsors you have more chances the television to like you to say i want to have this lady under contract and mm -hmm. sometimes you don't need to be a world champion to have a good contract. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, often in the sport industry, women get a good contract because they look sexy, feminine. You right. know? But at the same time, they're serious and they fight like, like a tiger. It's a kind of combination, like you say, like beauty yeah. and the beast but there is a fine line daisy you it sounds like you had a nice team behind you like to help you truly help you and that's what it's all about you're only as good as sometimes as your team because you it, yeah like, yeah right? uh, you it's always need to suit together you know um I did choose my team by myself. Uh, just it was a luck, intuition, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, we just commit very good together mm -hmm. because sometimes you have the team but didn't work well, you know. Mm -hmm. That is like a family, you know. You need so to you commit everybody. You, so are you telling us that you had a main street inside the ring? <laughs> that I had what? You had a mean streak inside the ring. I had what? Mean streak. You were the mean one in the ring. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can say that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You became beast. You was beauty outside and beast inside. I just said beauty. Damn it. Exactly. You know, um, <laughs> look. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Look, well, I'll um, give y'all ladies my take take on the sexy, and you yeah. know, going a little bit too raunchy, because uh -huh. you know the sexy is everything that Daisy and Loopy was saying that it can help you garner attention to make money and be get more spots so get more fans. It works in your benefit. So, but you're still being sexy because you feel that you're sexy. 
But now when you start being sexy, just because you think that that's what's going to sell and that's what's going to help, work. You, that's the wrong reason to do it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Also, sexy does not, it goes over into raunchy when you mm-hmm. put the inboxes from men thinking that you're selling something. That's mm-hmm. the line. It's like as soon as mm-hmm. I get the first bloop, oh, somebody's in my email. I look and they're like propositioning me in the wrong mm-hmm. way. I know I what well, they should know they've gone too far. But yeah. some. Mm-hmm. So to me, that's what makes sexy okay. And then that's when it that's what it takes to make it go to the raunchy side. Mm-hmm. But I feel that women need to use all of their feminine attributes to their yeah. advantage. Um, because mm-hmm. men are doing it and um in boxing, so they mm-hmm. should just as a hundred percent equal in that opportunity to me. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. do you think, Amelia? Hey, I agree with you. Guys. I knew you would. <laughs> 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 you know, you'll you'll find some women who will um Say, I'm not going to do that. I'm not kissing ass, but it's not really kissing. It's playing the game. If you want to, it's just like in the corporate world. You just play the game. You know? <laughs> yeah. And well, when you see the mailboxes without their shirts and they all, you know, they got them looking all oiled up and sweaty. <laughs> so, you know, they just was lounging on the chair. Like that is sex appeal. They're, they're making them half, you know? <laughs> you know what? Um, so, you know what? I know. I, I always say everything, what you say is depends how you interpret it sexy. Uh, but uh, my experience is like, you're the one, you're the person who make uh, people to respect you in your community, mm-hmm. you know, the men. Mm-hmm. And uh, like I say again, I don't judge anybody, you know. I just, I can say what I did. Uh, and I, I just want to say my experience because I already had a successful career behind me. And um, I will say that um, especially in my life, in uh, my experiences, uh, we, I always like to say we, where we all eat from one plate. That, that's what I mean. We all are together. We train together. I was the only one a woman that trained with so many men. I don't mix the personal life with my professional life, you know. And that is a principle for me that I never broke uh, my principle, you know. Mm-hmm. I always respected that I trained with this man, the very attractive man too. But I'm also an attractive woman too. And also it depends how you dress when you train, how you... Uh, respect the world, the main world that you are. And I just want to tell you girls that I never had any problem in the main world. I always was, and I am very well respected. And um, my, uh, they're all my friends. And um, I had um, a lot of gentlemen, if you believe or not, I never had any harassment, any problems through my whole career. You know, uh, oh, but that is the amazing because I would yeah. think you're gonna have major issues. But that is depends from you. You're the person who make people to respect you. You know. Okay. So I'm sorry if you go and train uh, with men and you're half naked. I mean, who gonna take you seriously? You know okay. what I mean? So certain things you have to respect if you go in this direction. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, but. If you start to talk on this uh, sexuality and sexual stuff, you know, then um, I think that everything will go in different way. You know, that is very individual stuff that everybody alone have to decide what you're going to do and how you're going to represent yourself. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. Emilia? Hey, Daisy, I want to know how did you get the nickname The Lady? How did that name come about? Uh, good question. Um, honestly, mm, I wanted to be Daisy the Leopard Lang because Leopard, <laughs> oh. leopard is my, yeah. the first, uh, uh, my first fights, I was dressed like a leopard and okay. also my favorite boxer uh, was Oscar De La Hoya, you know, okay. and the uh, golden boy, you know what I mean? Oh, Oscar? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, and even Oscar wasn't my autogram card, as uh, you know, I saw all his fights and 
and he, I mean, there are many favorite boxers, but he was my favorite boxer. Um, because of uh, the way I look, because of my always, uh, I have a big smile, uh, I always was polite, respectful, nice uh, to people. Uh, my fans tell me, and they told my manager, she's not a leopard, she's a lady. I no. mean, and, and we don't know what she's doing in the boxing world because she doesn't belong to boxing world, uh, you know? <laughs> and that's, uh, I don't know why she chose that, but uh, she's a lady. Um, so my fans gave me this name. It was well, not a management. Yeah, it was not a management. It was not my wishes, what I wanted to be. Uh, mm -hmm. My fans get this name, and um, so uh, so I'm famous in boxing with that name. Well, I actually like both of them. I like the leopard, and I like the, and I also like the lady. So I'm I'm liking both of them. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Rob says even Miss Daisy's dress at the 2019 International Women's Boxing Hall of Fame was red. <laughs> he does this. He is too much. <laughs> <laughs> Luffy, what are we gonna do with Rob? He is a mess. He is all over the place. He's really? okay. So, He's Luffy, I had a couple of little quick questions for you. What mm -hmm. is the next over in the California area, as far as um, women boxing is concerned? Do we have a fight coming up for any of them over in in that state? So right now we can't even spar, or we shouldn't be sparring. Okay. Uh, so in California, I mean, there's nothing going on. There really isn't. We planned on doing um, a sparring camp. We were hoping for October. We don't think it's going to happen. Um, oh, wow. So the numbers are that intense right yeah. now. I mean, boxing slowly coming back. Mm -hmm. In Buffalo, um, New York this weekend. So there was a little girl out there, and she won her belt. So there's stuff happening slowly. Sugarbird's coming out in Florida. They say the Nationals is on for Louisiana. I mean, at first I was like, I'm going. And I'm like, am I going? <laughs> right, yes. Well, yes my right. sister hasn't opened her gym. I mean, my sister hasn't, she has no plans to open her gym for 2020. She's done. Oh, so, wow. She said, no way, huh? Yeah, and her kids are loving it because they think it's their own private gym. It is their own private gym. Yeah, it really <laughs> <laughs> They're all in shape. Like my sister's like, I'm in shape for COVID. She better be. Tell everybody exactly how they can find you on all your social media platforms and about your podcast later tonight. Okay, so 7.30 um, Cali time, which is uh, like 35 minutes. <laughs> I'll be on the two-minute round. You can find that at the two-minute round um, on Facebook, uh, Twitter. Uh, we're going to talk all female boxing. We usually have a special guest every other Thursday. Uh, today, um, it's just us. We have so much to talk about. And now with all this, I have lots to talk about. <laughs> my Great. sister and I, with, with uh, WBC champ Martha Salazar, Daisy, we started yeah. a podcast called The Call Out. So we're yeah. on, it's actually not a podcast, so it's a Zoom call. So we'll do that every week or every few weeks. You can find me, Boxing Meets Beauty, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, go to Twitter. It's a little, uh, you know, you can get a little loose on Twitter. <laughs> Yeah, Twitter is like way out there right now. But Thank you, Lu Lupi. I will find you definitely. You're a wonderful girl. I like your story. And I like that uh, you using boxing as um, a good uh, treatment, therapy. You enjoy it and you're helping uh, mm -hmm. young people. That's amazing, amazing, amazing. I always support that. Uh, unfortunately, girls, I have to leave you because I have other calls today. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, you can also find me on Instagram, Daisy Lank One. Um, I was not very active in social media, but I will start to to do that more right now. It's a time for this, and you and have I, a fan base. I mean, they really would like to see more of you on their I social it. media. And yes, I want you to go ahead and take us out and with one of your um, nice positive messages. Like the one you gave me on the phone when we spoke yesterday about finding a happy spot and getting, you know, like using exercise as a way to get negative energy out. Just, just give us some parting words, um, Daisy. 
Absolutely, my dear, that every day is a new beginning and, and don't stop to believe yourself. Uh, just do it what you wish. And uh, it is uh, only one plan, plan A, it's not plan B. If you follow your dreams, they will come true. Nothing can stop you. And stop, don't stop to try, you know, don't stop to fail, to, don't, don't be afraid to fall down. Just do it. Don't listen to other people's advices. Just do it. And then you're going to find the way. And uh, most of the reason is to find a way and to make you happy, you know? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. to, the day, to the rest of the day, you say, I, I did that. I just make it happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's always about it. how you feel, you know? And keep smiling, yes. think positive. And that is my formula for success. I love it. We got to get you back on here because I need all the okay. energy I can <laughs> <laughs> I love well, thank you, Thank you all for coming I, so much. Oh, go ahead. I enjoyed. I enjoyed a lot. You oh, wonderful girls. And we will do another connection again. For sure. Absolutely. I, we would love that. Loopy, you Thanks, as well. Girl. And I'll be looking thank at you. your um, your podcast tonight, too. Hey, thank you so much for, for inviting you. us on. It was really great. Love you guys. Love yeah. you guys. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Bye. All right, guys. Bye, Miriam. All right. All right, Luke. All right. So that was ladies' night. I mean, we had two. Then we have two wonderful ladies. Man, I'm ladies. I mean, drunk with all this beauty. <laughs> They had physical beauty, and then they were saying the word beauty. And drunk, baby. and you saw how <laughs> you saw how Daisy and Luffy were full of positive energy, which is also another level of beauty. Right. So that's what, what the irony was. Mm. And for anybody that wants to find us, I mean, you got Facebook Live as well, but you also got YouTube, Twitter, IG, and our website www.boxandplayhouse.com and you can also go ahead and click on subscribe when you go to our YouTube channel because we need those subscribers. Please inbox us because we also can give you instructions on how to get to us on Periscope as well as um, I forgot what the other one was. Periscope and Twitch. That's what it was. Yes. And we just thank you so much for being a part of us and enjoying the time that you've spent with us. Please let us know how you feel about Ladies Night. Every first Thursday of the month, we have Ladies Night. Next week, we got a special guest that we're working on, and hopefully we'll be able to secure that because I know you're going to love him the way that we already love him. World champion, too. Mm. I'll jump to that. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next week, Thursday at 8 p.m.